So good afternoon, my name is Anoka Nandare and I'm from the National Institute of Science Education and Research. It's in the eastern coast of India in a uh, place called Bhubaneswar. And it had been set up as an institute of national importance to encourage research in the basic sciences. So I've been working here this summer in Professor Tom Martin's lab in biochemistry. And the title for my project was Effect of Mutations in the MUNC-13 Homology Domain of Calcium-Dependent Activator Protein for Secretion, also known as CAPS. So the um, specific interest in this protein that I was studying uh, originated from a research uh, from research in uh, regulated exocytosis. Um, so uh, exocytosis is a process by which cells package their secretory contents into vesicles and release them into the extracellular medium. Um, while most cells have a pathway which is called the constitutive exocytosis, um, cells which are specialized for secretion, such as neural cells or endocrine cells, have an additional pathway which is called the regulated exocytosis pathway. And it has three steps. Um, first is called docking. First is called docking, whereby uh, a vesicle is brought close to the plasma membrane. The second is called priming, which makes a docked vesicle ready for release. And this involves tethering the vesicle to the plasma membrane by formation of um, complexes between the vesicular snare proteins and the target membrane snare proteins. And following a rise in intracellular calcium concentration, the membranes for the vesicle and the plasma membrane merge with each other and uh, lead to the release of the contents of the vesicle. So the third step is termed fusion. And the protein of interest, CAPS, possibly acts as a step of priming and um, is known to increase the efficiency of vesicle release and it is also an essential protein required for uh, regulated exocytosis but the exact way in which it functions is not completely understood. So I'll take you through a brief history of GAPS and uh, the questions uh, or the ideas that led to my project. So beginning with the identification of GAPS, so uh, investigators uh, of regulated exocytosis wanted to be able to reconstitute the process of calcium-dependent exocytosis uh, in an in vitro system and to completely understand what are the factors involved in, the, um, in this process. So what was done initially is that cells were taken, secretory cells were taken, they were cracked open and their cytosol was removed and uh, cytosols from cells lacking a regulated secretory pathway uh, or cytosol from bovine brain extract and other uh, cells which have a regulated secretory pathway were supplement uh, supplemented to these cells. Following an addition of calcium, it was found that for those cells which received cytosols from cells lacking a secretory pathway, calcium did not increase, uh, was not, uh, I mean, the process of regulated exocytosis could not be reconstituted effectively. Uh, whereas when bovine brain extract was added to these cracked cells and calcium was added to them after that, um, this effectively, the, the process of regulated exocytosis could be reconstituted in these cells. So um, this led to, the, to an exhaustive search for all protein factors uh, in bovine brain extract that were responsible for these effects. So uh, I had narrowed down to a 1.5 kilodaltin protein, which was later termed CAPS. And it was this which was, it, it was seen was responsible for this effect. Um, so since CAPS is a protein involved in secretion, it is pertinent to ask whether the activity of CAPS depends on the activity of snare proteins. Um, and investigators wanted to uh, identify that in an in vitro system. And for this reason, a, um, a lipid fusion assay was used. Um, so two sets of liposomes were made. First one, which contained a quenched set of fluorescently labeled phospholipids, uh, NBDPE and RHPE. And um, they also had inserted into their membrane the vesicular snare protein back too. Um, so when these two lipids, the NBDPE and RHPE, are placed very close to each other, 
The fluorescence of NVDPE can be quenched by a phenomenon called FRET or fluorescence resonance energy transfer, which is exquisitely sensitive to the distance between these two different kinds of lipids. So, um, uh, and, and a second set of liposomes was also made of the same dimensions, but lacking fluorescently labeled lipids. And into its membrane were inserted the, trans, uh, the target membrane snares syntaxin in SNAP25. Uh, so when there's a fusion between these two uh, liposomes, these two sets of liposomes mediated by these snare proteins, um, the content of lipids from both these kinds of liposomes mix and there's a two-fold dilution of the fluorescent lipids that were originally present in just one liposome. So because of this dilution, the average distance between the lipids increase and FRET no longer happens because it exceeds the critical distance for FRET. Um, because of that, the fluorescence due to NDDPE is recovered and we can follow this up as an assay for liposome fusion. From such experiments, it was identified that uh, when CAPS was added uh, to this system, there was an increased amount of um, lipid fusion which was seen and this indicated that CAPS was accelerating liposome fusion in a snare-dependent manner and also led to other additional questions such as does CAPS directly interact with snare proteins even though its function is, de uh, is dependent in snare, uh, on snare proteins. So the next set of studies were conducted to address this question and they also used an in vitro technique um, using liposomes. So liposomes with snare proteins inserted to their membranes were taken um, and CAPS was incubated along with these liposomes and this was subjected to density gradient centrifugation. So what we observe is that, what we expect to see is that if CAPS directly interacts with snare proteins which are inserted to liposomes, uh, it would be found in the liposome bound fractions whereas if it does not interact, it would be found in the unbound fractions. Um, and protein fraction following density gradient centrifugation. Now what is seen is that indeed CAPS is found along with liposomes which indicates that it might interact directly with liposomes and secondly it again in turn raises another question uh, is which region of CAPS interacts with snare proteins. Um, Um, to address this, truncations of the full length capsule protein was created and all of these were again subjected to the same kind of experiment as I just uh, showed in the previous slide which is they were made to bound to um, snare proteins inserted into liposomes and it was seen that while most of these uh, caps fragments were incapable of binding to snare proteins there was a sub segment which indeed uh, had the same binding properties as the full length caps and it localized to the NHD domain or the MUNC13 homology domain in the caps protein. Um, but given that the length of this was um, substantially big, it's a 69 residue long segment, we still don't know the exact identity of residues which are involved in binding snare proteins. So this is where my uh, project found its context. Uh, so the first part of my project was to mutate two consecutive segments within the 69 residue long fragment um, uh, to adenines and then observe the function of uh, these mutant constructs in a secretion assay. Uh, coming to uh, look at it, uh, we find that uh, a sequence alignment reveals there are some residues within these uh, five segment regions which are conserved and whose functions are not known so they demand study. And the second part of my um, project was to mutate another conserved five residue segment in the C-terminal region of CAPS uh, which just preceded a dense core vesicle localization sequence. Um, the reason why this was of interest is because again the segment which has been boxed in red is conserved between several species and again we don't know what precise function it performs. Um, the experiment design that we adopted to answer these questions involved first constructing mutants of the CAPS protein and cloning them into a red fluorescent protein vector tag RFP 
by standard site directed mutage access protocols, uh, followed by transfecting these constructs into HEC 293 FT cells. And then we observed the protein expression by, by free fluorescence microscopy. So, subject to the condition that these proteins wouldn't aggregate when seen under the microscope, uh, we would then express, we would then clone them again into a construct that would append a C terminal hexastidine tag to it and transfect them into hex cells again. Following that, we would purify proteins using standard nickel NTA column chromatography techniques and then test the activity of these in a permeable cell norepinephrine secretion assay. A uh, slight detour from the central focus of my experiments, um, we also looked at the expression patterns of some CAPS MHD1 domain mutants uh, that a graduate student in the lab had previously made. And the reason we were interested, or rather he was interested, in this part of CAPS is because it exhibited some similar, uh, some similarity to a snare motif. And again, these were very conserved residues, and we didn't exactly know which what functions it performed. So uh, upon transfection of these mutant constructs to hex cells, we found out that uh, most of them would concentrate into punctate structures um, in, in cells. So we were not exactly sure whether they were aggregates. But given that the protein wasn't exactly soluble, we did not go ahead with an RDE assay because effects due to a uh, misfolded protein, it could be a potentially misfolded protein, uh, could not be ruled out when we observed the early results. Um, so these are the other six, uh, other, other three mutants that we also tested. And uh, these mutants were also made by mutating these residues to alanines. Uh, and the same kind of pattern was observed for all of them. Coming to the mutants that I talked about making previously. So uh, the, this, uh, these were the expression patterns of the CAPS 952 to 956 and 957 to 961 mutants. Um, both of these are within the monk homology domain. And it turns out that the CAPS 952 to 956 alanine mutant uh, aggregated again. So um, since it was not soluble, we did not use it further for our DNA analysis. But the uh, 957 to 61 alanine mutant and the C terminal mutant, uh, the RYDEG, uh, they seem to express soluble proteins. So we went ahead and analyzed them 